Accidents often end in tragedy. It is the suddenness of it all and the unexpected deaths that leave everyone in shock. This man woke up from a coma and found out that he was the only one in his family who survived a terrible car accident. Before we continue, please take some time to subscribe to Daily Dose Like and share this video with your friends. Overwhelmed with grief, Mason was unable to move on from what happened. But three years later, as he was walking in the park, he spotted his dead wife and son walking around happily. He tried to catch up with them, wondering if they had been alive all this time. Mason was a man permanently changed by the tragedy of losing his wife and son in a car accident. The whole family was driving through the mountains when the car lost control and plunged into a raging river. Mason was the sole survivor of the accident, and that was out of pure luck. He had very severe injuries and was in a coma for several weeks. He did not know what happened to his wife and his son until he woke up from the coma. The police were unable to find the bodies of his wife and son. Mason was left to mourn the loss without any resolution or closure. A search party was conducted, but all efforts were in vain. His wife and his son were declared dead. Overcome with grief and his body unable to function, Mason lived at an asylum out of town to recover physically and mentally. It took all of Mason's strength and focus to learn to walk again, and that made him unable to grieve his loss properly. When Mason was able to walk by himself on crutches, he made it a habit to go out and take a walk in a park near the asylum. He walked the same route every day and it helped clear out his mind and thoughts. He would usually walk until he reached the fountain. He would sit by it and wash his hands in the water. After a while, he would walk back to the asylum. But that day something changed. Mason was sitting by the fountain when he noticed a woman and a little boy walking by. Mason immediately felt sad as he remembered his wife and son. The more he watched them, the more he realized that the woman and the child looked a lot like his own wife and son. Out of curiosity, Mason tried to follow them, but he was still using crutches and he could not rush himself. Before he knew it, the two disappeared around the corner before he could get any closer. Mason told himself that he was just imagining things and decided to go back to the asylum and call it a day. That night, Mason was scheduled for a therapy session. He told the psychiatrist that he saw a woman and a child in the park who looked a lot like his wife and son, but he was not sure if it was real or just a hallucination. The psychiatrist listened to him thoughtfully and said that maybe what he was going through was delayed grief. He pointed out that Mason had been through a lot and he was unable to mourn properly because he had to recuperate right away. The next day, Mason found himself looking for the woman and her child when he arrived at the park. Even though he thought his mind was playing tricks on him, he was still hoping he would see them. But they were nowhere to be seen. The rest of the week passed by with Mason not being able to see the woman and her son in the park. He was about to accept the fact that he was probably just seeing things when exactly a week later he spotted them again. Just like the first time he laid his eyes on them, he could not stop seeing the similarities between this woman and boy with his wife and son. Mason knew this was impossible, so he held back from following them like he did last time. Back at the asylum, Mason could not sleep. He was hounded with a lot of questions. Was he just seeing things? What if his wife and son were alive all this time? But if they were alive, how come they never tried to look for him? Mason realized he should approach the woman the next time he saw them so that he could have clarity and peace of mind. The next day, Mason could not wait to get to the park. He planned to wait at the side of the park where the woman and the child usually came from. That way, he would see them closer without having to follow them. Mason sat at a bench that the mother and son usually pass by. When the woman and her son showed up, Mason held his breath. He was closer now, but he still was not able to get a good look. They did not even glance his way as they passed by. Could it be that they were just total strangers all this time? Because if they were his wife and son, they would recognize him from that distance, right? Mason walked back to the asylum, disappointed. He had a relapse. Physically and mentally, it was painful for him to move and he barely left the room. He missed his therapy sessions often too. It looked like the disappointment he felt had affected him greatly. One day, Mason showed up for therapy again. He was not eager to talk things out, but he did want to leave his room even for just a while. The psychiatrist suggested to Mason that he resume his daily walks in the park again. It took a little more convincing until Mason agreed, but he had one condition. 
Mason told the psychiatrist that he wanted less medication. He thinks that he imagined his wife and son because of his medication. Mason told the psychiatrist that he did not want to see them anymore because it hurt when he realized they were not real. The patient agreed to lessen his dosage temporarily as long as Mason keeps him updated. Mason started walking in the park again. After having a lower dose, he was feeling the difference. He was walking better and he was able to appreciate the weather and fresh air. It was a great improvement in his mood lately. As usual, Mason headed for the fountain. He sat on the ledge and washed his hands on it. He then hung around and listened to the birds chirping, feeling completely relaxed. But when he opened his eyes, he saw the woman and the boy again. Mason washed his face with water to make sure that he was not just seeing things, but they were there. So it was not just the medicine after all. This time, Mason decided to follow them. Once again, he had difficulty catching up. As the woman and the child started moving farther away, he felt desperate. Madam, he first yelled out. Then he tried yelling out his wife's name, Susie, but the woman did not turn around. Mason noticed they were heading up a path in the park that had a dead end. He still had quite a distance to go, but he was relieved when he was able to see them again. They looked at him as he walked towards them. They were smiling, but they were not smiles of recognition. Mason concentrated on their faces as he got closer. It was only then that he realized they were not his wife and son. They only looked like them from afar. Mason was confused, unsure of what to do. He was disappointed and rubbed his eyes. The woman asked Mason if he was okay and if he needed help. Mason looked up surprised. The woman's voice was different from his wife's. It was just another confirmation that he had been wrong all this time. Mason started to stutter and said, Can I ask you something? Were you in a car accident three years ago? The woman stopped walking and faced Mason. She did not respond, but she had a strange look on her face. Mason repeated his question about the car accident and noticed a tear roll down her cheek. Her answer would bring chills to Mason. Yes, the woman answered. How did you know that? Mason could not believe his ears and was too stunned to speak. He looked around for signs that he was still in the real world and that he was not hallucinating. Mason sat down and asked her about their accident. The woman shared that they lost her husband in a car accident three years ago. She and her little boy were able to survive. Mason learned that the circumstances of their accident were very different from his. The accident happened in another town. This confirmed for good that this woman and her son were not his wife and son. Mason told him his story and how he had thought they were his family for the past week because of the similarities. The woman immediately felt for Mason and told him that he should have approached them right away. It must have driven him crazy not knowing whether his hunches were right. She told him there were times when she would mistake a man for her husband, too. They spent the next hour exchanging grief stories. The little boy took a liking to Mason and even wanted to sit on his lap. The woman introduced herself as Alice, and she said she would want to stay friends with Mason. She found it relieving to talk about her grief with him. Alice said that perhaps meeting each other was destiny given how similar their situations were. A lot of people tell her to move on, but they never really get that it was not an easy thing to do. Grief was something that stayed with you indefinitely. Mason confessed that he stays in the asylum nearby. He told her that he was still recuperating physically and mentally. He was just allowed to take a walk in the park for an hour each day as part of his recuperation.